Right, so just when I thought I couldn't get more hyped about this game, having an entire YouTube channel dedicated to talking about it says a lot, but oh my god the new Nintendo Switch trailer was the best trailer I've ever seen. Oh just take it, just take the money, take it, have it, have it, that's a train ticket, I don't care, take my money. I slept for two hours last night, but let's get this analysis ball rolling. And I mean, you can see the length of the video. Not only was this trailer long, but it was also chock full of awesome details. So grab a cold drink, get comfy and let's go. Okay, so first off, I'll go through the trailer slowly, breaking it down into scenes and explaining what's happening, as well as pointing out interesting and hidden details. Then afterwards I'll tie together any loose ends, describe overarching themes, theories, that sort of thing. Let's get into it. So the trailer begins with a long panning shot over what looks like the ocean, and in the distance, interestingly, there's a shrine in the water, on a small island with a dead tree. Link will probably have to swim, or even better, raft, over to it to access it. And just look at the scale of this world. The cliffs are absolutely giant, and everything, even in the distance, is really well rendered, suggesting the Switch has a better render distance than the Wii U. Then we cut to a shot which is presumably nearby, or at least another coastal location. We get a cute little look at the wildlife, and some little waterfalls in the distance, which is a really nice touch. They seem to be coming out of the cliff face rather than falling down it, so perhaps there are underground rivers. Maybe that's asking a bit much. In the distant ocean we can see dark spots, which are likely deeper areas of the sea. Perhaps there's a way to swim down there. Next up, some really pretty cliffs, in what looks like to be a tropical area due to the trees. There's a really awesome spring network, with waterfalls pouring down the rocks and the setting sun reflecting on the water's surface. Really stunning. Near the base of this large waterfall there's some sort of large rectangular object. Whether it's a ruin of some sort or something more isn't really clear. There are also these really big roots coming down the sides of the cliffs. I mean, they might just be decorative, but what if they'll help Link climb up in some way? Here's a nice desert shot, with something interesting we see up close later on in the trailer here in the background. I'll get back to that later. On the left we have a stone arch, but closer to the camera we have something really weird and new to Zelda. There's a new race native to the desert, a race of sand walruses. No, I I'm not joking. There are more later in the trailer. They're pretty cool actually, just chilling in the sun. Anyway, there's also a resurrection tower visible in the mountains in the distance, as well as a huge sandstorm here. I'm not sure whether this could be a passing event, or if it's something we'll have to clear to pass through the area. Next is a stunning shot of Snow Peak with an arctic fox in the foreground foraging for food. Cool, I wonder if we'll be able to hunt it. This is a really nice overview of a large forested area, with this part in particular being of interest. Two big structures next to a small campfire. Could this actually be this location from the Game Awards 2014 footage? There are two very similar stone statues, and if you look very closely, there's what seems to be a campfire in the background here, so they might be the same place. Now this scene is in my opinion where the Switch's extra power over the Wii U really shines. The lighting here is really, really nice, with rays of light coming through the canopy of the trees above, and the colours are really vibrant and saturated. We've got a few Koroks chilling here, in what seems to be a line, showing a path of sorts towards this huge route here, which I'll get back to in a sec. We've actually seen a few of these Koroks before, such as O'Kane here, Raun here, and Olivio here. Here we get one of the big reveals of the trailer, a returning fan favourite character from Ocarina of Time, the Great Deku Tree. And I mean, this time he's a great Deku Tree. He's huge! If you look up here at the top, you can see the trademark eyebrows, nose and moustache he sported in his Ocarina of Time debut. There are a lot of big branches up there too, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if we got to climb on this beast at some point. Aside from the tree, we have another massively important Zelda staple here, the Master Sword. Yeah, it turns out its resting place here in the woods is actually at the foot of the Great Deku Tree, surrounded by Koroks and weird stone statues. Huh. We can see that the Master Sword here is in a similar condition to a E3, rusted and broken. Now here's a crazy thought, the Master Sword has been known to reside in the Lost Woods before, like in the Downfall timeline, and we know that the Lost Woods is often found near the forest in which the Deku Tree lives, so what if, in order to traverse the Lost Woods and find the sword, you need to follow the path the Koroks show? 
It's a recurring trait to have to follow things through the Lost Woods to show the way, such as in A Link Between Worlds. It's an interesting idea. And Nintendo didn't want us to miss the sword, because we immediately get a close-up of it in its pedestal in the forest. Though this time, interestingly, there's a weird blue glow emanating from the base of it, whereas there wasn't before. It's still ruined like it was at E3 2016, however. We've seen blue energy linked to the sword before, like in Ocarina of Time, but what exactly this is is unclear, but I'll get back to my theory on it later. Now time for downright one of my favourite scenes of the trailer, the huge panning shot of Link standing atop a great rock, looking on the world below. Brace yourselves, because there's quite a lot to take in here. Right, so starting on the far left, we have a resurrection tower and some wild horses on a hill. Then here we have what looks like some sort of enemy base, with giant bones forming a sort of fortified pit. Creepy. Just above this we have another resurrection tower and the Sheikah bird ship, which is as usual near Snow Peak. Then there are a couple of large towers that don't seem to be resurrection towers, so maybe they're simple Hylian outposts like we saw at the Game Awards 2014. This one's definitely a resurrection tower though. There's something that looks like a gigantic tree here, though I don't think it's the Great Deku Tree. This is because it's quite close to Death Mountain, rather than where I expect the Great Deku Tree to be, down here, in the province of the map marked on the official new map as Faron, as in Faron Woods from Twilight Princess. There are also some mounted bokoblins visible just here. This is a small shot of Link running up a similar hill, though there's not really anything to note. Here Link's climbing up Twin Peaks like we've seen him do a few times. He can be seen visibly sweating, so perhaps he's about to fall. This is a weird scene. We have Link running up some huge ramshackle looking wooden bridge which rises from a small cliff. In the background, we can see a strange spiral-like part of the coastline, which if you look on the Game Awards map you can actually see here, placing this scene just around here. Neat. Here's Link scaling Snow Peak, though interestingly without a quilted shirt, so perhaps he's already consumed some food to allow him to survive the cold. On the left we can see flags, which means this could take place near here. Here we have Link riding through some ruins with the first voiceover of the trailer. I'll group all voiceovers together and analyse them later on, so we'll ignore that for now. It's likely that this shot takes place in one of the many ruins that cover Hyrule Field, judging by the design, the flag and the flat landscape. This shot takes place inside the Temple of Time with the Hylia statue we saw at E3. Here's another shot of one of the Guardian graveyards we get across Hyrule, a relic of the war that waged in the past. Again, the trees are tinged with the colours of autumn, suggesting seasons might be present. I've got an analysis video on that here. This area is just beautiful. We have some pretty stone ruins beside a lake and some tall cliffs, which interestingly also appear to have some sort of structure built into them. What's really interesting is that we can see just below the surface of the lake what appears to be some sort of hatch perhaps an entrance to an underground structure, which is awesome. Another shot that really doesn't do much here other than look gorgeous, Link riding a horse past these tall desert cliffs we've seen before. This scene here is all very early game footage. We start with a normal panning shot of the Great Plateau, which we've seen countless times before. Then we see part of the cutscene that plays when Link activates the first resurrection tower really early on in the game, complete with a shot of it bursting out of the ground and the cutscene that plays just after this on top of the tower where we see the Calamity Ganon for the first time. Standard. Ok, this scene is awesome. We see one of the skull head bases that Bokoblins like to use as strongholds, this time presumably near Snow Peak. This shot takes place as enemies are being spawned by the Calamity Ganon, as seen by the trademark purple energy and dark clouds just before they drop to the ground. This is a really cool touch since we didn't know beforehand that the Calamity Ganon is creating these enemies, so now we see where it gets its legions of minions from. Here's a Guardian fight scene, though could this one be taking place in a cave? We see some sort of torch on the rock here, as well as what could be a sort of wagon used in mining. And we get a return of the Great Plateau's big baddie Steptalus, confirming that this is a species of golem that we'll encounter in multiple locations around the map. This is pretty cool, since now we can't relax near any group of nondescript rocks for fear of them turning into a 30 foot monster. Awesome. This scene is badass. It shows Link, accompanied by one of the sand walruses, which we can see close up a huge and furry, which he keeps on a rope, battling against something that looks strikingly similar to Molegra from The Wind Waker. They both come out of great sand pits, both have huge crocodile like jaws. Oh, and they're both huge flying snake things. If this really is a return of Molegra, I'm pretty sure it's a welcome one for nearly every Zelda fan, even just for the return of the amazing battle theme.
Now we cut to Link using Cryonis, the rune that allows him to freeze water into pillars of ice, here to jump over some potentially poisonous water towards a huge stone structure. This could be close to Hyrule Castle and the ruins of Castletown, judging by the purple calamity goo, patent pending, here, and a purple glow in the distance, as well as its close proximity to Death Mountain. Speaking of Death Mountain, we get a look at what could be inside the game's fire temple. Link, giving absolutely zero fucks, walks shield up through the billowing flames being thrown at him by a fire breed of Lizalfos. The fire enemy, as well as, well, the massive pillars of lava, give this area away as somewhere near Death Mountain. We've seen this handsome fellow before. Last time we saw the switch actually, here. It's obviously related in some way to the Moblins and Bokoblins, as we can tell by the singular horn, the pig-like features, and the red skin, though this one's some sort of giant cyclops variant. While the one we saw here had some sort of Sheikah technology around its neck, this one appears to have a few human-sized weapons, perhaps as trophies from defeated wannabe heroes. It makes sense that killing these beasts will reward Link with the loot on their necklaces. Right, this scene's really cool. Inside some sort of large building, near a strange structure with canvas-like walls, Link's locked in one-on-one -on -one combat with a huge warrior wielding a giant energy-infused samurai sword. This guy's obviously very ninja-inspired, hence the sword and the tight clothing, complete with Jikatabi footwear. Interestingly, the guy also has the Sheikah symbol across his face, similar to the monks we've seen in the Shrine of Trials, although the Sheikah symbol is upside down. Could this mean that this ninja's some sort of Sheikah defector, and has turned the symbol upside down to show this? It's possible, since the Sheikah we know are traditionally good, yet this guy seems pretty intent on killing Link with his massive sword. This one's pretty standard, which we've seen before. Link uses Magnesis to smack seven shades of sugar puffs out of a group of Bokoblins on the Great Plateau. Now, this scene could be following on from the Calamity spawning scene, or it could be a similar location in a different area, but either way we have a giant skull camp full of Lizalfos, which Link swiftly deals with by hitting explosive barrels with a fire arrow and sending them all up in smoke. And yet again we get a good look at that smooth, smooth FPS of the Switch showing no frame drops even when this huge explosion was on the screen. It's awesome that just before firing, Link has to sidestep to avoid both a shot from this Lizalfos and this giant vomit thing from this one. It seems that these guys are incredibly dangerous at range as well as up close. Here we have a weird Sheikah object. It looks sort of like a brain, although it's covered in the traditional Sheikah pottery designs and glow. It's obviously still good Sheikah tech, since it's not glowing with the purple glow of the Guardians in the Calamity Ganon, so what could it do? Well, it seems to be in a giant Sheikah room, and I'll get back to what I think it does at the end of the video. And then from Sheikah tech to Sheikah tech, we get a close-up of the giant pillars surrounding Hyrule Castle and Ganon. There isn't really too much to say about it, but it's really, really cool. Right, time for another Craigasm moment. Link jumps off a high cliff, with the whole world opening up below him. The ocean is visible, tinged with sunset, as well as the huge mountains below. So cool. Time for a look at the biggest town we've seen so far in Breath of the Wild. It seems to be a far more advanced civilization than this one here, since the houses are built out of tiles and daub. If we zoom in, we can see two citizens, both on horses, next to what looks like a lamppost and some sort of strange collection of rocks. There's an interesting building up on the cliff, and this actually allows us to know where this town is. We can see the same building in the E3 trailer here, also on a high cliff, showing that this town is found quite near this lake. Back in the town, we can see what looks to be a potion shop here on the right, with a bottle on the banner as well as four huge canisters full of presumably the shop's stock. Red potion for health, blue potion for magic, green potion for stamina, and yellow potion for... Well, yellow potion's a bit of an odd one in Zelda, since we've had it do multiple different things, so it's not clear what it'll do in Breath of the Wild. On the flag just above, we can see what is presumably the town symbol, though I'm not sure we've seen it before in a Zelda game. This town has a huge abundance of windmills, suggesting that they either have some sort of power, or at least produce a lot of flour or something, I don't know. From grassy hills to barren desert, we're moving on to the next town, this sandy village. There's quite a lot to cover, so we'll start with the top, this giant rock formation that the town's built around. This weird rock formation obviously houses some sort of spring or oasis, because running down the sides of it are multiple waterfalls, which are cleverly channeled around the roofs of the little town in a network of mini rivers. I might be overthinking it, but could these little streams be an ingenious cooling method for the houses? 
I can't think of many other reasons to deliberately channel water like this over the whole roof. Just under the base of the oasis is a rather ornate palace-like structure, with giant sandy arches and stone steps. Then we get to the main area of the town, decorated with six palm trees and a couple citizens down below. We can see the entrances to buildings, or perhaps shops, are decorated with bright cloth, as is often the case in very hot cities in the real world. It's when we get to the main gate of the city, built into the rock, that we find out just who this town belongs to, the Gerudo. There's a massive Gerudo symbol proudly displayed on the stone, and coupled with the location, a desert, pins this as likely the home of the desert thieves in Breath of the Wild. From hot to hotter, we now get a shot of Death Mountain Trail. Yeah, the route up to Death Mountain in this game is looking more barren than ever, with nothing but bare stone and the carcasses of burned trees dotting the landscape. Here's a shot similar to the one from the Life in the Ruins trailer, though this time we've got a friendly guest in the form of a guardian. Rafting is back from E3 2016, though this time Link's on a larger raft and in larger waters. He's also without the Korok Leaf for wind, so perhaps on the open waters it's possible to just use the ocean winds instead of needing to propel yourself. Now we get a close-up of the Great Deku Tree and his little Korok children, and in case you needed any more confirmation that this isn't just a really big tree, we see his mouth move here as a deep voice talks to Link. We can see the Master Sword here again, though this time there's no blue glow and the sword is repaired. I'll get back to the state of the Master Sword in the trailer later on. Okay, here's the first of a little sequence of battle scenes which are spread out throughout the trailer. The camera pans past a group of ruined, corrupted guardians who flicker in their death throes in the cold rain. Then we move from the battlefield to a pretty flower. Aww. This is one of the flowers we see surrounding the Master Sword and in the game's logo, so there's obviously some importance to them. Okay, get ready. This is probably the scene in which we see the most, because the camera does some crazy manoeuvring here. We start with Link on the Great Plateau Resurrection Tower, looking out towards the castle and Calamity Ganon, so we can see Twin Peaks and its nearby tower in the distance. Then the camera quickly zooms out, revealing the Great Bridge of Hylia and Lake Hylia behind the plateau, and the tower near them then rotates round so we can see the whole plateau and its great walls from Hyrule Field. The camera then moves quickly backwards across the field away from the plateau and towards the castle, past a flag and some small woods, over a little dirt path, past two shrines and one of the horse out we've been seeing in screenshots and trailers, a few small wooden bridges, a tall stone pillar like the ones on the plateau on an island in the centre of a small lake in a forest, another arch bridge, and finally up behind Twin Peaks. Phew. Yet another Kragasm moment, a massive corrupted Sheikah behemoth on Death Mountain, glowing brightly with the energy of Ganon with its feet aflame. This beast is so huge that we can actually see it circling Death Mountain from all the way on the Great Plateau, here. I'll explain what this is at the end, and it wouldn't surprise me if the way to defeat it was to extinguish the flames on the feet using Ice Arrows or the Cryonis Rune, before climbing up the legs and onto the beast itself to deactivate it in some way. Bad. Ass. Here's a small shot of Link, showing impressive emotion with hardly any facial movement, standing behind Zelda with the Master Sword on his back. Next, a massive room of obviously Sheikah design, with the corruption of Calamity Ganon seen at the back. Again, like with the giant Death Mountain Titan, it's easiest to explain this at the end. Here, Zelda's bathing in a small pond, or so it seems. It's actually not just any small pond. You see these ruins here. They match up exactly with the Earth Spring from Skyward Sword, where Zelda travelled to to remember her past life as the Goddess Hylia. I'm almost convinced something similar is going on here. Okay, here's part two of the battlefield scene I was talking about earlier. Link's obviously in bad shape, covered in mud and with a broken Master Sword looking back towards the camera. We then cut to this, some huge Sheikah robot walking in the desert, again under the corruption of Calamity Ganon. We can actually see this during some E3 footage here, in the distance, so we know that it's a lot bigger than we can see even here. Sorry to keep doing this, but I'll explain this at the end too. Here's a shot of Link and Zelda by some statues in the rain, suggesting that we'll get to travel with her at some point during the game. And now here's a shrine raising out of the ground, confirming the commonly accepted theory that they lay dormant under the earth since ancient times. 
Whether this scene takes place in the past, or if Link can trigger the emergence of more shrines later on in the game, is unknown. Here's yet another part of the Battlefield trailer, a shot of a muddied Link letting go of the hand of a worse for wear Zelda, who we then see in much better nick in the next scene, looking sorrowfully behind the camera. Right, another important scene, Guardians overrunning Castletown. We can see that they're all corrupted by the Calamity Ganon, and are moving outwards from the castle towards the rest of the world. This is likely what this tapestry from the Life in the Ruins trailer was showcasing, that the Guardians were originally present in huge numbers at Hyrule Castle, but were corrupted and sent out to wreak havoc from there. Scary. It's also obvious now that it is Hyrule Castle Town from Twilight Princess here, as we can see from the layout. Okay, here's some sort of emotional scene. Zelda in her travel wear, and interestingly holding a Sheikah slate, is talking to Link over her shoulder. I actually think this could take place after this scene from the Life in the Ruins trailer, since Zelda is in the same attire and has a Sheikah slate in both scenes. Whether this takes place in the past is not clear, but it's more likely than not considering Link doesn't have the slate, and Zelda does. I'm not sure where in the world this takes place, but it's within eyeshot of the Great Bridge of Hylia, which we can see here. Yet more Zelda here, though this time she's in a bit more distress, running frantically from something. Her top's interesting, the Hylian bird crest worked into the design here, as well as the Triforce just below it. She also has the Sheikah Slate here. Okay, this scene is just straight up really, really confusing. We get Link, a character we see in detail later on, a Goron who we see later on, and Link's weird pet walrus thing, all looking towards a massive structure of Sheikah origin. This is actually the very same mech that we saw here, though it's dormant here, either destroyed or before it activated. Okay, this scene hit me hard even in the trailer. It's another battlefield scene, though some serious shit's obviously gone down, as Zelda cries hysterically into Link's shoulder. Damn. It's likely that whatever went down at this battle, it had a great cost. Right, onto some lighter stuff, Link riding through a marshy field in combat with a mounted Bokoblin near some ruins. Great. And another really awesome new enemy appears, this time a Stalfos variant of the Moblins we've seen. A Stalmoblin? We've seen Stalfos Bokoblins, so it makes sense to have skeletal versions of their big brothers. Awesome. This one's wielding a bow, but doesn't get a chance to use it before he eats an ice arrow to the face. New character time, and confirmation of my favourite Zelda race, the Gorons. This guy's beard tells me he might be an elder. I'm not really sure what he's up to here. He shouts, here it comes, and claps his hand, and there's a lot of blue fire. Weird. Maybe he's giving Link some sort of power up, or maybe it's an attack. This shot takes place in these snowy mountains, and we get a look at a huge carving present there. It's really similar to the Desert Colossus from Ocarina of Time. Maybe this is also a depiction of the Goddess of the Sand. Either way, it definitely marks something important. And then of course, it wouldn't be a Zelda game without a creepy great fairy, and it turns out Breath of the Wild holds back no punches in this regard. Jesus. She emerges out of a small spring decorated with pearls, and we can see that this great fairy fountain is located in the desert somewhere open to the air. Perhaps Link needs to throw a bomb in to awaken the fairy like in the Minish Cap. Another simple but gorgeous scene, Link horse riding along the beach. Okay, here's the character I was talking about here, who we can see is actually one of the Gerudo, or at least very likely one of the Gerudo, judging by the sharp nose, skin colour and red hair. I'm not really sure what she's holding. Could it be an instrument of some kind? Whew, another race confirmation. This time it's the Zora. We get a close-up of a large male Zora here. More shots inside a large Sheikah area with huge wheels. As with the last clip, it's obviously corrupted, as we can see the pink glow here as well as Calamity Goo here. Last time I'll say this, I'll explain this at the end. Here's Zora number two, and this time it's a female, with jewellery of the Zora emblem on her hair. Is it hair? Fish hair. Hmm. And we see the return of Falco from the Life in the Ruins trailer. It's pretty much identical to last time, though this time he's laughing as he flies up, suggesting that he's friendly rather than aggressive to Link. And now we get to see what's presumably the Zora Palace, judging by the presence of what could be the king here. Link seems to be being greeted or rewarded by this huge fella, who's obviously a warrior of some kind judging by the shark-like appearance and the scars on his head. 
There's also a really weird looking Zora in the background. I think this one's actually based on a manta ray. It's cool that we're getting new variants of Zora based on different ocean species. Okay, time for the biggest battlefield scene. We see Zelda holding her hand up and using some sort of magic towards a guardian, whose laser is focused directly on a defeated looking Link's head. Damn. I'll get back to this later. Now we cut to Zelda, though this scene is absolutely in the past, judging by how intact everything is, as well as the lack of Ganon in the castle. We cut back to the battlefield with a distressed Link, in a similar position to where he was when Zelda was using her light magic, looking intently forward before pulling the broken Master Sword from the ground. We then see a worn Zelda in the presence of the Deku Tree, before the trailer cuts to black. And then, with one last open your eyes, the trailer's finished. Phew, that took a while. But now we've gone through everything we've seen, and can begin to piece together exactly what it was that we saw. So this trailer was mainly comprised of standalone shots, but there are also some distinct shots that group together into mini scenes. The main ones I'm talking about are the Sheikah tech shots and the Zelda shots, so we'll break them down. Okay, first off, the Sheikah tech. So now we've seen three gargantuan mechanisms, right? The Death Mountain Titan, the Bird Ship, and the Desert Titan. Well, during the Treehouse stream, we got a look at the back of the map in the Collector's Edition, where we can see that all four corners have a diagram of these mechs, including a fourth elephant mech we haven't yet seen. From this, we can infer that the Bird Ship is this symbol, the Desert Titan is this symbol, since we can see the two humps here, the Chameleon is the Death Mountain Titan, as we can see the lizard-like head and legs here, and of course, we haven't seen the elephant yet. Well, what could these do? I think the trailer gives us some good hints. Do you remember these weird shots of massive corrupted Sheikah rooms, filled with lots of moving parts, cogs, gears, etc? Well, what if those were the insides of these great Sheikah mechs, and to defeat them, Link must find a way to get inside and tackle them like a dungeon? That could explain what exactly this Sheikah brain-like structure is. It could literally be the brain of one of these behemoths. Another interesting detail is that Hyrule Castle and Calamity Ganon are surrounded by four great Sheikah pillars. Well, it's no coincidence that we have four great Sheikah mechs under its control. There's obviously a connection between these pillars and the mechs, so perhaps destroying them will weaken the Calamity. The other strong focus of the trailer was Breath of the Wild's incarnation of Zelda. Just what's she up to here? Well, we can split it up into a couple of different parts. I think for one, one of the main goals of Zelda's character in this game is similar to her goals in Skyward Sword, remembering her past life as the Goddess Hylia. This would explain the game's strong focus on the Goddess, as well as the shot of her bathing in the exact same location she did in Skyward Sword in order to remember. And of course, the other big Zelda sequence is the Battleground one. If we knit the scenes together into chronological order, we can see that during some turmoil, during a great battle, Link falls to a guardian. Yeah, Link dies. Then, a still worn and muddy Zelda takes the Master Sword to a sacred place, the Deku Tree's meadow in the Lost Woods, in order for him to repair it over time while Link's revived in the Shrine of Resurrection, ready to exact revenge upon Ganon and save Hyrule. This was by far one of the largest and most difficult videos I've ever made, and I really couldn't have done so without the help of my Discord. To all of you, thank you. If you like this video, consider leaving a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe for more. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.